My urban planning project is coming to an end and now we have to do some renders. The problem is I've never really done any renders just because I never had the knowledge of doing it. Actually, a few weeks ago, I got contacted by Render, which is a render software that you can use online. It's made easy because it's using AI. So a lot of stuff you don't really have to do anymore. It's more of prompts and modifying the renders that you already made. So today we're going to be using the platform and trying it out for real to try and make the renders for my final project. So I really hope it's going to work well because I need to present this in one week and we don't really have that much time to spend on renderings and we need good quality because it's the final presentation. So the first thing you need to do is go on your computer and go on render.ai. So for the render that I need to do, it's actually a project of a um, district. And so I took a screenshot of the 3D model. So it's really blank. We didn't do any details and I'm going to try and put some details so that it helps to know where we are and what is actually in the district. Just so you know, this feature is not free on render.ai. There's other stuff that is free, like text to image, but for this one, for 3D to image, you actually have to have a subscription. The first subscription starts from $19 a month, monthly. If you need it for just one month, it's only $19. And if you actually decide to get the subscription, you have a discount code for 10% off, which is Louis 10. I'll also put it in this description so you can enjoy doing your renderings for little bit cheaper. You also have to know that this video is in collaboration with render.ai. Keep in mind that I always choose my collaborations when I actually think that it could be useful for you. So let's go back to rendering. So I go on my screenshot and then I'm gonna import it to render.ai. So once I import it, I can actually start rendering. So you can try different rendering styles. You have more realistic, artistic, some collage, some watercolor. So you can play around with these presets, but you can also ask it to do your own style. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna search on Google for something that I like in terms of style and so that the AI can kind of copy this style. So it's more in the style that I want. I think I really like this one. So I'm gonna save it and then import it in the style part. And now it's gonna analyze the style and I will be able to do some renderings in this style. So once I have this style, I'm gonna to go to 3D Base to render and import the photo that I have of my 3D model. And once I import it, I can add a little description to help the AI kind of understand what I want and to say some specific stuff just so that it has like a little prompt to start with. I think it really works if you do like a first render and then you edit it and you edit it over and over again so it refines what you want because it's probably not going to look like what you want from the first try. But it's really cool because you can actually edit it. So then you can also decide if you want to keep the colors, how much creativity for the style you want and how much of the structure you want to keep. So for me, I want to keep a lot of structure because I don't want the AI to just do a new project. I want the AI to render my own project. So I'm going to go to strength to the maximum and put a little bit less creativity. And I can also change the number of generations so I like to do two, so I have two things to choose from, but you can also do four, it's just gonna um, take a bit longer to generate all of it. I think it's like a good base, but for example, like I need some more windows, like it doesn't look the way that I want, because it's, if I show this to the teachers, they'll be like, why are your windows so small? So I'm gonna have to change that and also the street has to be with more grass because we want to emphasize the fact that it's with a lot of greenery. So I'm going to add some greenery and also maybe like some personas or something so that it feels like it's a real place. Um, so I'm going to go over to edit and I will be able to choose an area. So I'm selecting the area that I want and now I will be able to write the prompt that I want, so I'm going to write the that I want windows, the amount of stories that I want, because it's actually important to show the amount of stories, just so it has an idea of the scale, and also that I want some brick wall, because it's the local material and we said that we would be making the buildings in bricks. So I can go over and do these adjustments for the first facade. Okay, so now it looks pretty good. I've had to do a few trials, 
Um, I think now it's fine and now I'm gonna go over to the other wall to also add some windows because it's also supposed to be some place where people live. So I can just go over and select it again and add the windows. Okay, now I kind of like it and I'm gonna fix the floor. So I'm gonna tell it to put some grass and some vegetation, some plants. So again, I just use the prompt and yeah, it works pretty well. Like we have kind of the base, but it's kind of weird how it looks like. It's not really grass. So I'll try to put some real grass. Okay, now it looks a bit more clean and I'm gonna add some personas. So because it's supposed to be like some place where children can play, I'm gonna go over and just write some like place for children. Okay, so it actually rendered some two kids that's not the idea that I had, but I kind of like how it looks like. I think it makes just like the view a bit more lively and it looks pretty nice. And also I like how like the end of the street looks like. I think it looks more natural because you have like a real wall and like a real building. So I think this would work pretty well. So now that it looks like something that I want and like what I kind of had in my mind and I think it's something that I can be able to use I'm gonna go and upscale it and enhance it so it gets better quality because now it's kind of a low quality so I'm gonna enhance it and now that it's enhanced I can just upload it and export it and so I can use it in my presentation. So as you can see, it's really fast. Like you kind of have to play around with the prompts, but overall it's, it's so much faster than on other softwares and it's quite easy to do. So you have a lot of things that you can do. You can also do like a video, for example. I'm gonna stop for this one, for this project. That's a really nice render. And it was really fast to do and I really didn't have time, so it's really good. Actually, when I was in first year, we had a class for rendering. It was on another platform, I don't remember the name. The problem is it was a software installed on my computer and it was so big that like it just didn't work. I couldn't really open it, I couldn't really use it, it was way too slow. And now on my computer, my computer is quite old and it takes a bit of time to generate, but it's still possible, like I can still do a render and if I had to use a normal software, it would just not be possible with the computer that I have now, it's just, it's dying. And so I never really did any renderings just because I couldn't. And so I think it's really great just to have a platform where I can actually try because I never really did it. So if I'm really bad at it, I'm sorry, it's my first time actually trying some real renderings. So this is it. I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you maybe discovered a new platform or new ways of making some really nice visuals. And let me know in the comments how you actually do your renderings and on which platform. I would be interested maybe to try some other techniques. So yeah, I hope you liked this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!